So thank you so much for joining us today. I would like to welcome Nancy Mosa, partner at KPMG, to start us off. All right, uh, thank you, Payne. Please confirm that you can hear me clearly. Loud and clear, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, I want to start by welcoming everybody to KPMG's seventh annual Global Cyber Day. Uh, KPMG, as you know, is a leading provider of uh, cybersecurity consulting services, uh, spreading across 143 countries and territories globally, and we are committed to helping the world's top organizations manage and protect against cyber uh, attacks. Now, as KPMG, we have decided that every October, this will be our month of international cybersecurity awareness. Uh, this community initiative that we have is aimed at educating young people and adults um, uh, about the importance of cybersecurity. It will also empower individuals to create a, a trusted digital world while we promote greater awareness and preparedness in the face of cyber threats. We know that everything is technology and so cyber threats have really, really increased. Now, since the inception of this initiative, we have educated more than 490,000 young people across approximately 3,040 schools in 66 countries and territories. Now, our global uh, Cyber Day program is very detailed. It's both in person and it can be virtual like this one. And the content is aimed at uh, children whose ages range from seven to 16. Uh, it's also aimed at the teachers and the parents who support them. Now we are aware that uh, cyber crime is on the rise and our young people are of course the most vulnerable to risks. Uh, you know, because they have so many gadgets that, uh, that are open to them. Every time they open their phones or laptop or iPad, there's always something to catch them there. So because we are aware of these risks, we do a very detailed um, one hour. And some of the things that we cover include social media, um, online identity protection, cyber bullying, online gaming, and cyber threats. Now, our tailored curriculums teach valuable lessons about how to stay safe while they're online and how to protect personal data. So I just want to welcome you once again and to wish that you'll have a most insightful session this afternoon. Back to you, Payne. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nancy. We'll now move on to the beginning of this awareness session. I'd like to hand it over to Gilbert. Gilbert is a manager within cybersecurity at KPMG East Africa. Uh, thank you, Payne. Good afternoon, everyone. Payne, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want to extend my, my sincere greetings to you all who have been able to turn up for this session. And uh, it's a pleasure and uh, a honor to see that uh, the turn up is great, showing dedication from the parents who have gathered uh, for this important session. Um, uh, we are here today to discuss how parents can protect their kids online from cyber threats like cyber bullying and uh, the threats that uh, they're exposed to over the internet. Uh, in this age of technology, uh, uh, the children are growing up in a world that is vastly different from the one that uh, most of us have probably experienced growing up. And uh, so just children are exposed to the internet, social media, pretty much the overall digital realm as uh, an enabler to their education and uh, fostering other aspects of their life too, like entertainment and uh, getting along with other colleagues as they go on about their business. So the internet and the digital landscape have opened up uh, unprecedented opportunities for learning and communication for children, but they also expose them to new and evolving technologies that uh, most of us are probably aware of. And so it is our responsibility as parents, uh, caregivers, guardians, or in whatever capacity that uh, we are nurturing the children to equip ourselves with the knowledge to protect them online. So um, what this means um, is that amidst all of this, we ought to practice cyber safety 
as parents uh, and also uh, equip ourselves with the knowledge that is necessary to guide the kids as uh, they navigate uh, the internet. So this entail, entails protecting yourself, your information, uh, the devices you're using while on the internet and other digital technologies, uh, encompassing a range of strategies, uh, behaviors and measures designed to ensure a safe and uh, secure online experience for you and the children. So cyber safety is not uh, really a matter of concern, but it's an absolute necess necessity. And as parents, we must be proactive and vigilant, just as we would in any other aspect of our children's lives. So today we will explore uh, some key strategies and uh, tips uh, from uh, the presenters to help us navigate this complex world and keep our children safe uh, online. So uh, first, uh, the, during the discussion regarding online safety for children, uh, this also brings to light the importance of uh, open communication with our children. Uh, this resonates with, uh, with digital trust uh, as one of the key pillars that uh, KPMG rides on. And uh, so that means building trust, building trust is paramount across the board. And our kids should also be uh, in position to feel comfortable to come to us with their own online concerns without fear of judgment or ridicule, uh, to foster an environment where they know they can be able to come for support and protect them and guide them through the uh, this complex world. So uh, throughout this session, we encourage you to ask questions and uh, actively participate in the discussions. Uh, the more we engage and share our experience and concerns, the more we can learn from one another. So uh, our, uh, our, towards the end of the session, we shall go through an example or two uh, of how to implement some of the features that the presenters will go through uh, as a takeaway for us to, 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 to learn a thing or two and how to enhance the way we are protecting our kids back home. Uh, so I'll take this opportunity to introduce the team that uh, will be taking us through uh, the presentations. Uh, Nurse Mosa, who has pro already introduced herself, a partner uh, within uh, our uh, consulting practice within East Africa. Uh, we've got uh, Cynthia Msindi, who is a cybersecurity consultant uh, within KPMG East Africa, based in Nairobi. Uh, we have Lewis Mugo, uh, who is a security consultant as well, based in the Nairobi office. Uh, we have Payne Omari, who is uh, uh, a security consultant as well, based in our Nairobi office. We have uh, Chelsea Ngugi, who is uh, a, a tax consultant, uh, but uh, with uh, avid interest in cybersecurity, uh, and she's part of the panel that we'll be presenting. Then now uh, we've got Sharon Wambete, who is uh, uh, a senior consultant within our business support team based in Nairobi. And uh, we have uh, uh, Abija Kanene, who is uh, a senior manager within the uh, business support team uh, based in Nairobi, uh, Chris East Africa. So uh, I'll invite Payne Omari to take us through our next session. So amongst uh, the topics, that uh, we shall be covering uh, before I bring pain over. We shall be covering uh, eight uh, areas within, uh, within this session. One uh, entailing protecting the kids online. Uh, so that means uh, as parents, we ought to, to, to be aware one of uh, the, different, uh, uh, the different avenues and channels that uh, the children are using to access online content. Uh, watching online content safely, what are the different measures that could be put in place to ensure they're browsing the internet safely, uh, either via a VPN or using a safe browser or some bit of uh, ad protectors to prevent them from um, pop-up ads that uh, uh, sometimes uh, 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 social engineering attempts to lure them into uh, doing malicious activities on the devices. Then we, all, we shall also go through the use of social media, uh, just to also delve uh, into the realm of uh, uh, network, uh, the social network, social networking within this on these platforms, uh, to ensure that uh, they are safeguarded from uh, the threats that come from that realm. 
then we shall go through cyber bullying which is also an area that uh, is very uh, um, prominent uh, with uh, children online uh, given the different uh, interaction that they engage in with uh, with their counterparts online then we shall be going through the um, uh, the smart ways of using uh, phones uh, that uh, are handheld by the uh, by the children uh, we shall go through online gaming, which is uh, the fun part of it, but it also comes with its cons that uh, we need to be aware of and uh, protect our kids from. Then uh, we shall go through some of the concepts of cyber attacks that uh, we ought to be aware of as parents, uh, just to be abreast with the different ways that uh, malicious users could uh, aid to, to, to bait uh, the kids into uh, performing malicious activities online. Then we shall also go through how to manage uh, the screen time of, uh, of our children, just to ensure at least an uh, adequate amount of time is uh, allocated to them and uh, managing uh, and also finding a balance, also finding a balance between uh, the devices they, they feed off and also vis-a-vis -vis other, other aspects of their lives. So I'll invite uh, Payne uh, to take us through uh the session of protecting the kids identity online and uh there we shall carry on to the next presenter over to you Payne. thank you so much gilbert um a huge thank you once again to everyone who's made time for this very important session so some of the things that we need to be on the lookout for with regards to keeping our kids identities secured uh have a lot to do with the kind of digital footprint they have. Unfortunately, technology may not even be aware of what platforms their children have signed up for. And so some of these accounts may come as a surprise to them, or they may never even find out that they do have accounts on some of these platforms. So as best practice, some of the tips we want to leave with you is make sure they choose their usernames and that they uh, practice password safety. So this means let them avoid using personal usernames and let them avoid using very simple passwords. The same uh, password parameters that you may have at your work, uh, place of work, for example, such as a mixture of uh, uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, symbols, and at least eight of them uh, is a good place to start from. And more importantly, please make sure that they don't share their passwords with their friends. Password sharing is something that we found to be very common amongst children uh, because they don't see the harm of sharing some of these uh, passwords with people who they feel they trust. And more often than not, these are their friends. So this is a risk because some of the friends who have access to their accounts might actually be on the other end uh, bullying them or maybe interacting with other strangers who mean harm, and they might not even be aware of this. So those are some of the important aspects to consider. Uh, please cultivate a relationship of trust where they can check in with you before signing up for certain sites. Enable security settings and download security tools and software. Um, as part of our personnel here at KPMG, uh, who has been mentioned by Gilbert. Abby is going to share with us a practical example of how she's been able to use security tools to safeguard her children uh, while they use their mobile devices. That will come towards the end. We also have the aspect of keeping software and programs updated, as well as uh, making it a habit for them to think about what they're interacting with as opposed to how the platform wants them to interact with uh, whatever resources they have. Another idea is that they should never share or post email addresses or personal information for that matter. This is how some of the people who groom children online uh, get access to information that can help them stalk these children. So if children are posting pictures of their homes, of where they frequent whenever they're out at home on the weekend, that's information that you should be able to explain to them uh, that they should never share. So the idea here is to make them understand that there is privacy. Privacy means limiting the information you share. This is what is unacceptable to share. 
So you present this as information that helps them understand what is safe and what is not safe. Then lastly, avoid free Wi-Fi. So online content, this is also quite a, a dicey uh, topic for parents in this day and age. We're talking about social media sites such as YouTube. We're talking about, about video sharing. Uh, we're talking about Instagram. We're talking about WhatsApp. The list is endless. Now, when watching content online, there's a couple of things that you have to do with making sure that they're only visiting secure sites. Part of how to make sure they're not visiting um, sites that may potentially be fraudulent is ensuring that there's that little uh, padlock on your web browser, which informs you that you're actually connecting to that site via a secure connection. The next is to make sure that they don't sign up on sites that ask them to uh, create an account as a prerequisite for accessing certain content. This is usually done for games uh, and sometimes news on certain blog sites where for you to access what you're looking for, please sign up. You could even see this when trying to download certain uh, content or even while trying to stream movies online because most of the streaming sites are actually not legit. Any different um, viruses, uh, so many different types of pop-ups, uh, a lot of advertising scams. So those are things that they should watch out for. Fake news is something that is affecting the world at large, not just children. And so we, our idea is if you can be able to let the children know what to look out for when interacting with news on social media, then it helps them cultivate a process that allows them to interrogate the different news sources that they see. So we are going to get into that in the next slide. Uh, you could let them know to watch what they download, even as they stay focused, and to help them understand what scams on the internet look like. It could be as simple as, as a, a sponsored ad that they got for a toy, or even a mobile device that they've been meaning to buy, and this usually ends up being very convincing to them to a point where you might seem like a barrier as the parent when they tell you that they've seen something they want to purchase and you're not moving fast enough. So the sense of urgency that's created by some of these scams is what you need to let them know to look out for. We've seen them uh, give you information here, spin the wheel and you will win a new, a brand new iPhone. We're giving away X amount of money. Please sign up and you'll be able to get these funds. Those are some of the scams that they should be able to recognize. So some of the things to be on the lookout for to identify fake news are grammatical errors, um, related articles that are not reporting the news, and also clickbait. So clickbait is preying on the natural curiosity that we have as human beings, more so as children, to get us to interact with something. You've created a desire, almost like a, a, a bait, which is going to draw us into the next step that you are trying to put in front of the children. So how to get better grades without studying. Uh, very popular ones these days have to do with betting or being able to uh, get more followers on your social media platforms. All you need to do is like this post and you're going to get an extra 50 followers. And because uh, your follower count is something that matters to everyone, not just the children, they end up falling for some of these scams. So I'd like to invite Cynthia, Cynthia Musindi, to go over social media as well as cyberbullying. Uh, I know it's important for a lot of us. Over to you, Cynthia. Oh, thank you so much, Bain. Um, As mentioned, my name is Cynthia, and I'm going to take you through social media. Uh, we all know the role that social media plays in our lives currently. It's where we get to keep in touch with our friends and family, <clears throat> and also post the good times hardly the bad times but mostly the good times out there yeah so i'm here to give you some tips on how you can ensure uh, your children stay safe when they're on 
when they're using social media platforms. Uh, Pain, maybe you could reshare your screen. Yeah, uh, so some of the tips that you need to have to ensure that your children are safe for you, even when they're using social media, it, you can only restrict social media for so long, yeah? People, children get to an age where they actually want to experience some of these things and you cannot, you cannot be there watching over everything they're doing. So ideally, we advise that for most of these social media applications, they usually have age restrictions. So ensure that your child is joining uh, social media platforms at the appropriate age. And additionally, you need to monitor their use. How are they relating with people online? What kind of posts are they posting? And in this way, when I say monitoring, it wouldn't be a matter of bring your phone, let me see what you've been doing. Maybe you could be a friend, a follower, and you can just be a passive uh, observer of their interactions online. That would really help you know what your children are doing online. And you don't necessarily have to par participate in whatever they are posting. Just be a silent observer and be sure of what your children are sharing online. Uh, I will put a lot of emphasis on ensuring that these accounts are <clears throat> protected using very strong passwords to prevent uh, access, anyone, unauthorized people accessing your accounts or taking over your accounts. Uh, most of the time it would be, it would affect like your personal information will be put out there, which is not safe as well. And then uh, most of these social media sites usually have privacy, privacy settings where they could access information that they do not necessarily need. So we would advise that you review the privacy settings that are put in these social media applications. And then advise your children to stop and think before posting. Is it something that uh, maybe they would really want to see it, uh, uh, to see themselves on social media, is this how they really want to see themselves on social media in future? Is it how they want to be perceived by anyone who comes across the specific posts they're making? Yeah, because anything you post online, as we all know, uh, can't really be deleted. You might delete it on your end, but it can still be found one way or another. So you, need, you really need to emphasize on that when talking to them and also guiding them on how to use their social media accounts. Uh, they need to also be careful with what they click online. Uh, it could be links to malicious sites. It could be they'll be clicking to things that uh, are enticing in such a way that maybe you're going to win an iPhone. That's a bit absurd, yeah. But yeah, a child can click on that expecting to actually win an iPhone. Uh, in real sense, uh, maybe they're downloading malicious content into their devices, which would bring, which would bring security concerns to your network, even household in full, yeah. Ideally, we would advise that children should only contact friends and family, people they know, uh, because you're trying to avoid situations where online grooming uh, is involved or where people are talking st to strangers. And they are also, we're also trying to avoid situations where people are being bullied by people who hardly know them. Uh, another point would be you need to respect, they need to respect people's privacy. Uh, when your children are posting images online and they're with friends, they're with family, they need to have sought con consent first before posting these images because some people might not be comfortable with those things being posted. Yeah, If they are taking images of places or other people, they also need to ensure that it is within the acceptable uh, use of those people's uh, images and whatnot. And I addition, and lastly, ensure that your child is not a bully. Most of the time we usually say uh, children are being bullied, but what if in this case it is a, if it in this case it is our children being the bullies? Uh, we need to ensure that people, our children are not mean to other people online so that they are treated just as they are treating other people. And privacy would be the 
biggest element of it all. Ensure you're only communicating, they're only communicating to people they know, people they're familiar with. That would really help secure their interactions online. Another aspect of social media and what people would actually come across uh, more frequent than not uh, on social media are internet trolls. Trolls are just mean people. Uh, they don't care. They do not really care if uh, they're right or wrong as, wrong, as long as they've just made you feel bad about one thing or another. In, other, in most instances, people usually even say, what was that? What, what are you even seeing in the first place? But that is the job of a troll. And I feel like if you're on social media, you're bound to, in one way or another, interact with such people. So in an instance that your child encounters a troll, what should they do? Um, the first thing they should do is they should not engage the troll, yeah? They should not communicate with the troll. They should not encourage the person to keep on uh, talking to them because that is like, when you engage a troll, you are encouraging them to keep on being mean towards you, yeah? Another thing that your child should do in case they, ex they experience a uh, a troll, you need to have created a good environment such that your child can easily come to you or is it the parent or guardian, uh, come to you and tell you this is what I am experiencing. So and so has been really mean to me on the internet lately. Yeah, they should also screenshot the interactions and report it. You could also help them report to either the social media platform or the police and also change account settings, maybe block the user and make your account even more private. So that's all on internet trolls. And then uh, another aspect of social media that is quite sensitive, especially in this day and age, is online grooming. So when an adult tries to create a friendship with your child, uh, it happens quite often than not in this day and age. That's why I'm saying you can only restrict your child from accessing social media for so long, but it gets to a point where they have their own phones, they have their own it gets to a point where they say they have their own decision, they can make their own decisions and they end up joining these social media accounts and they might encounter uh, predators who are not there for the right reasons. So ideally what your child should do when they encounter an online groomer is they should never accept to meet a stranger in person because most of these people they usually ask personal questions and they're usually so keen on can we meet in person where do you stay who are your parents are they so strict because that is that is the information they need to know in order to entice your child yeah or maybe brainwash them to say they do not need to be under such strict environments, they can take care of them and whatnot. So ideally, uh, emphasizing again on not, not talking to strangers online, but if you've already gotten to a point where you're talking to a stranger, you need to tell your children not to agree to meet with people they do not know in person. And then in, uh, in addition to my last point when I was talking about trolls, uh, you have already you need to have already created the trust environment such that when even the child feels like this person is saying odd things to me, very weird requests, maybe sexual, uh, they are able to come up to you and, also, and always ask for advice. And they're like, I do not think this is normal. Yeah, so they need to always report such behavior to a trusted adult. They need to also block further contact from anyone who tries such things and only engage online with people they actually know and trust in real life. They cannot have virtual friends. It is too risky in this day and era. And also they need to trust their instincts. If something feels bad, odd or strange, then it most definitely is bad yeah so you also need to use to listen to your gut when using social media um adding on top adding on top of the adding on to the social media topic brings up to cyberbullying so cyberbullying has been 
quite the topic for a very long time and sadly enough it is just evolving with the technology uh there's a time when you had to be physically somewhere to be bullied but in this day and age you just have to be online you just have to be communicating with someone and more often than not it is people you know and interact with that end up threatening or insulting you or spreading gossip about you either on social media emails or text yeah so i would like to give you some tips on how you can help your child in case uh in case they are being cyberbullied ideally you need to make your child aware that cyberbullying is something that occurs a lot and you need to give them some tips on how they can protect themselves so when someone tries to bully or insult them they need to know that they're not supposed to respond to that person they also need to report to an adult and adults adults play a big role in protecting children in such in such experiences or in such environments so it's a good thing if they're able to trust you and talk to you uh, they need to also block the bully avoid further communication you do not engage with a bad person you're only going to encourage them to do more but yeah and also we also emphasize on privacy because if you only have your friends as your followers let's say on Instagram, and if you only accept friend requests from people that you actually know and interact with in person, it would be highly unlikely that they would be bullying you, yeah? So we need to keep that in mind. Also, what should your child do if they know someone else is being bullied? They need to provide support. They need to just show that person that they really care and empathize with them because that really uh, puts them, helps them not feeling so, not to feel so down in such a moment, in such a situation. Uh, you, you need to teach your child to be an upstander and not a bystander in such situations. They need to stand for those who have been the victims in short yeah and also they need to report it to an adult even when they're in this instance i'll say maybe their friends are not comfortable to do so and they should not participate in the cyber bullying they should not go back and forth with the bullying step they should just report it to an adult or even the police or even social media where they think it's where they think it will be helpful to the victim in one way or another And as a parent, guardian, or teacher, you can help uh, by communicating. How can you help a child who, who has experienced cyberbullying or has been cyberbullied? Uh, you need to, they, if they communicate, you need, it is you. I, I will emphasize on you because they need you need to create as the adult the environment where they're comfortable to come to you and speak about the challenges they are facing uh, day in, day out. So they ought they need to communicate to you in terms of what offenses or what offensive or hurtful comments they have received. They need to communicate that to you. And they also need to be careful with what they say, send, or post. Yeah, and then as an adult, you need to recognize uh, sudden changes in your children. You also need, to, if they're showing unexpected anger, uneasiness about maybe going to school or maybe for swimming lessons all of a sudden, and yet maybe to something they're enthusiastic about, and then abnormally withdrawing themselves from family and friends, those would uh those would stand as red flags in such a situation. So those are the things you need to look out for and maybe go deeper into it, inquire if, if your children are really okay. And after recognizing the issue, you need to take action on what has been going on. You need to save the, the text, the posts and emails. That's why you're saying you do not need to delete them. You just need to disengage stop communicating with them, but you need to save the text, the posts and emails. Do not reply and do not share. Do not try to be, uh, do not use social media as your court. Uh, so and so is a bully. No, do not reply or do not share. 
and then do the appropriate thing, report to the platform, and then block the user from further interaction. And if necessary, escalate the issue to the police or something. Uh, that would be all from me. I would like to welcome Louis to take us through using your phone smartly. Uh, thank you, Cynthia, for that uh, insightful presentation. And for the rest of the team, good afternoon for joining. I hope I'm multiple and I'm visible to the team. So I'll be taking you through using your phone uh, smartly. And in this day and age, uh, phones and other gadgets have become have the day-to-day -day life, uh, especially for our children, with the online uh, entertainment as well as educational uh, uh, facilities. So I'll be taking you some of the tips that you as a parent or a teacher or guardian can do to ensure that you protect your child. Uh, so the first one is set a password. Ideally, passwords are the key to the digital life. And ideally setting passwords uh, should be complex and should have a mixture of both uh, long characters, uh, the essential uh, ways of setting your password, mixture of characters, numbers, and should not also contain your name. Uh, the second is getting permission to download. Ensure your child uh, is aware that they have to seek permission from an adult or a parent or a teacher or guardian to download an app or to download uh, files from the internet. Uh, only respond to numbers you know. In this day and age, uh, we've witnessed and we've heard of online grooming. Uh, ensure your child is aware of such issues and should only respond to numbers they are aware of or they know of. Uh, the other point is being careful about what you communicate, personal, identifiable uh, information, such as your phone numbers, a home address, emails, a credit card information should not be shared online. Ask before you take and share. If your child has a picture of their friend or they've taken a picture of their house, uh, it should be proper and ideal for them to ask for permission to post that or to share that with their friends. Be mindful. Ideally, that has been touched on by my colleague. Uh, whatever you post, uh, stop and think and how it will affect uh, the person you're posting about. Keep it safe. Ideally, how you are using your phone or what you're using your phone to do. Keep your phone up to date. Ideally, this is patching and ensuring that all your application and the softwares that are being used in your phone or laptop or any other gadget is up to date. Be careful with Bluetooth. Ideally, when it comes to Bluetooth, this is sharing of files and other resources. And finally, connect carefully. So ensure your child is connecting with the right people uh, at the appropriate times. And finally, ask for help. The next part I want to touch on is gaming online. And before we move to the previous slide pane, I just want to briefly touch on it uh, for two minutes and just get an appreciation and understanding on why these uh, issues is important. So when it comes to gaming online, uh, there was a research that was done by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics that uh, stated that 45, close to 45,000 uh, children between the age of three and four have phones. So you can imagine the age that these children are getting exposed to such uh, gadgets and you know the gaming industry has been growing exponentially and this opens uh this industry to a, a wide array of uh you know cyber criminals and uh and just i want to take you back also and give you a good example of why this is a sensitive area so when it comes to gaming on i remember in 2016 uh there was a challenge that was going on and it was a period challenge where you know gamers online that was predominantly there were teenagers and children. So it was set in a way that uh, administrators would have challenges for these uh, children and there were 50 steps challenges, right? And the last challenge was uh, ideally for the game or the player to you know, take their life. So you can see this kind of a you know, sensitive area. And the fact that also this happened closer home, it happened I think in Kenya, uh, back in 2016, we lost one of our own. So ideally, as parents and as uh, teachers or guardians, we have a responsibility uh, to ensure that our kids are safe and are uh, engaging uh, in online gaming uh, safely. So some of the tips that uh, us as parents 
can you know undertake is implement restrictions this is in terms of you know the amount of screen time they are you know playing those games or the people who are they are interacting with in those chat rooms because that's where we find are uh, these kind of predators lacking and stalking our children set passwords to prevent purchases ideally cyber attacks especially in the gaming industry their I, their main aim is not only to you know groom and you know stalk our children but also for financial gain we might find a uh, when your child is being asked, you know, to provide the credit card number, you know, to purchase this game. So ideally, as a parent, you should ensure that you set passwords to prevent purchases, set clear expectations and rules, are the timelines in which uh, your child is engaging uh, with these games. Be careful about what they communicate. Ideally, this, as we've said, is the personal identifiable information, uh, such as the credit card information, such as the home address, such as the email. Uh, the other point is check before they download the app. Some of these apps are, are on free websites and very suspicious websites that if you go there downloading, since they are free, you download uh, viruses and malware that affect your um, uh, you know, network and also your machines. The other point is do not allow use of personal usernames. These are very risky times, especially if you see a child is online and they're easily identifiable by, identified by their names. So ensure as a parent or as a guardian, your child or their profile that they, they're using does not contain their names. Limit chat conversations, as we said, are, these are usually free chat rooms where they're engaging with strangers online. So ensure that what they're talking about or what they are engaging in, you are aware of. Uh, the other point is do not answer private messages from strangers. Unknown uh, messages from people who, you know, sound suspicious asking them to send, you know, pictures of themselves, pictures of their house. You as a parent and us as guardians, we have a responsibility to ensure this does not happen. Watch out for links and pop-ups. These may come in terms of, you know, adware or, you know, spyware, you know, these criminals have ways of, you know, tricking users into clicking such links and providing information to them. And then tell them to report any bullying. Any bullying that occurs in such a scenario, it's good to tell your child or to tell them that, you know, it's okay to talk, it's okay to speak up. And if this, you know, someone who's experiencing this, they should also report it to, you know, a trusted adult so they can provide assistance. Mm -hmm. So how to identify fake apps? So ideally, you need to check the name, the name of the app if it's spelled correctly. Check the developer's name. You need to check the reviews. If an app has less than, you know, it has 20 reviews and another one has a million reviews, I think you can see where you need to go to. Check on the date. Uh, beware of discounts. If the deal is too good, think twice. Uh, look at the screenshots. Uh, read the descriptions. The descriptions, you know, the usage of the app, what comes with it. I check the number of downloads. Some apps have you know, less than 100 downloads, others have 100 million. And the final uh, is permission. So it ensure that you know what the app is able to access or the information is able to access from your phone. So what do you do if you download a fake app? So ideally you delete the app, that's the first step. Visit the app store. So for the Android users, uh, there's the Google app store and the for the iPhone users with the Mac uh, app Apple Store. And then finally, you can also reset your phone to factory settings. So I'll hand over to my colleague, uh, Chelsea, to take us through cyber attacks. Thank you. Thanks, Luis, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chelsea. I'll be taking us through cyber attacks. Uh, we're going to look at what to look out for, how to detect those attacks, how to recover from the attacks, um, how to prevent uh, cyber attacks and how you build cyber trust with your kids. Please note that I'll be the last presenter before the Q&A session. So kindly keep your questions coming in the chat and then immediately after my presentation, uh, Payne will take us through the responses to those questions. So first, I'd like to introduce to us what cyber attacks are. And just as we're usually keen on protecting our kids uh, physically and teaching them to be aware of their physical surroundings to protect themselves from physical attacks, we also need to train them to be aware of possible attacks that could um, hinder their safety online. 
So going to look at four potential um, such attacks that would hinder their their safety online. And I'd like to note that a cyber attack is just basically online challenges that you and your children need to be aware of. And they're usually attempts by other parties to access information from your kids' devices or your devices or cause issues with your devices so that they make them targets and make you uh, vulnerable to, to, to loss of information and uh, misuse of your devices. So the first thing is spam and phishing. So spam is basically unsolicited emails or messages or links that may be sent to your children's devices. Ideally, they'd be promoting uh, products or scams. Um, as my colleague mentioned, they could have messages like they'd click and get followers, they'd click and, 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 and win awards. So those are things to look out for. While phishing, on the other hand, is where an attacker attempts to trick the child or the person using a device by posing as a legitimate entity. So for example, they'd pretend to be your kid's school or their church or their play group and send emails or messages asking for information from them or asking them to click um, emails. And as we've seen with the rise of um, cyber attacks, kids are very gullible and attackers are now uh, target targeting kids. So it's very important for us to ensure that we teach kids about these spam and phishing attempts and how they can go about those. And we'll get to that in a minute. The other thing is viruses and worms. And these are malicious software or programs that can infect your computer or your device. And they usually come in the form of um, files, so attached to files mostly. And so once that file is downloaded or the app is installed on your device, then the device is infected and then they'd spread across, um, um, those worms would spread across the network of devices that are connected to each other. And then spyware is software that usually is installed in a device secretly, of course, to collect information about your child's online activities. And that's without your knowledge or the knowledge of your child. And adware as well is just the same. And it can be as malicious. It's just as malicious as the spyware. And what that's, this does is displays unwanted advertisements and then also leading that privacy issues when your child clicks on those on those ads. Uh, then we have uh, ransomware and distributed denial of, of, of service. So ransomware is also um, a malware that would usually encrypt files in your device and then demand drums on, uh, for their release. So say if your kids are using devices where there is some um, very private information, with malware, those files are encrypted the same way they do, for example, to your work laptop, and then they, re they demand a ransom to for them to give you back or not to release that information um, to people who shouldn't be having that information about your kid. So we're now going to look at how to detect um, an attack. The first thing is unusual or uh, malicious or mysterious emails, sorry. Emails that are coming, spam emails and phishing emails would usually come from uh, email addresses that are A, unknown, or the emails would have suspicious subject lines. They also contain strange attachments. Our kids or or encourage them to practice being cautious when looking at emails and message uh, when looking at emails. Look at the subject lines. Do we have spelling errors? Are they mysterious subject lines? Do those subjects make sense for the for the children, or are they just um, useless um, subject lines that can be targeted uh, towards them? And then the second thing is messages about your password being changed. So one of the other red flags that we look at for, or rather that attackers can use to launch an attack, is sending you messages about the password being changed. And it's not you or your child that initiated the request for those password changes. So to encourage the children that if they do receive a message about password change that they've not initiated, the first thing is to come to you and not to click on, on the links to change those passwords. And then third, another thing to look out for would be your child being locked out of an account or a device. So if your child comes to you and says that they've been unexpectedly locked out of an account, that they often use or they can't access their device, it could be a sign of someone and authorized having had access to that device. So they should um, 
what they do, what, what you do when they come to you is try to go through the account recovery process, be it uh, say your Google account, the correct recovery process, and try to to log back into into that account or that device. And then fourth, we have suspicious or unusual pop-ups. These would be, for example, as my colleague mentioned, there's ads popping up. There's pop-ups for uh, click these and you'll win these. There's pop-ups for click these and you'll get followers. So those unusual follower, uh, pop-ups, there could also be pop-ups that seem to suggest that your device or your child's device has been um, infected. So ideally to teach our children to treat whatever pop-ups that they get on their screens uh, with caution, to not click on those pop-ups or download any software or any gifts that are suggested by those pop-ups. And then finally, another thing that you can use to detect um, a cyber attack is slower than normal connections or when your device performance has slowed down. So say you, your child's a tablet, for example, is overly slow when they're playing games, when they're trying to access documents on their machine, it's overly slow. That could be um, a sign that they've, they've, there's, there's, there's um, an attack happening on that device and that's something to um, look out for as well. So now that you know what to look out for, let's look at how in the unfortunate event that um, there has been a an attack on your child's account or on their on your child's um, device, how exactly do you um, recover from that attack? The first thing is to change your passwords. So once you've, you've uh, noted that an account has been compromised, the first thing is for you to get to go through the recovery process, get into the account and change um, the password. And then the next thing is to notify contact. So if your child has fallen a uh, victim to a cyber attack, just let their contacts, be it their friends, be it their friends' parents, know to prevent from further spreading of the attack because these attackers could have access to their contact list and they could use that to spread attacks to either their friends or their friends' parents as well. The third thing we can do to recover from attacks, and this is sort of preventative, is to back up your files. So to ensure that on a regular basis, you are backing up whatever important files are on your child's device or your child's account, and also to remind them as well to keep backing uh, these up or set up automatic backups for given periods of time, so that in the case in case you have an attack, then you're able to recover any data that may, may be lost um, in the course of that attack. And then uh, fourth, you determine what has been lost or, or, or compromised. So if, after an attack, it's crucial to access what data in your child's account or, or device that has been lost or has been um, compromised. You can help that by usually constantly having access to your kid's device and knowing what it is that's on your kid's device and also encouraging your kids to know exactly what information they have stored on their accounts or on, on those devices so that whenever there's an information loss then they are able to, to actively or rather to know what information has been lost or has been compromised. And then um, we have the installation of antivirus, but then also when you have an attack, now follow your antivirus uh, recovery steps. Almost all, actually all antivirus um, software usually have recovery steps to help you deal with the various forms of, of attacks. And so following those steps is key in recovering any information that has been lost during the attack. And then finally, check uh, to encourage your children to check with um, a trusted adult always. So whenever they do have say signs of those pop-ups, whenever their devices are a bit slow, whenever they're receiving uh, emails from uh, mysterious addresses, to always remind them that it's important to check with a trusted adult and you as the parent, as the teacher, as the guardian, being the trusted adult, then you're able to take charge and guide them through the process of recovery. So how to prevent um, cyber attacks? Basically, I'd say there isn't any much difference between how what my colleagues have gone through about uh, making sure that your kids are safe online, that they're safe on social media, and that they're using their devices or gaming safely. There's no much difference between that and preventing yourself uh, from cyber attacks. 
So the first thing is really, really strong passwords. My colleagues have mentioned, and we really can't insist enough. So please making sure that you've set strong passwords for your kids' devices and you encourage them as well. If they do have the liberty of changing our passwords to encourage them to make sure that whenever they do update their passwords, whenever they do change their passwords, that they do set very strong uh, passwords. And then using secured network or Wi-Fi. Um, a lot of, of these attackers would usually use free Wi-Fi because the security on that is very weak for them to get access to, to devices. So encouraging your kids to use secured Wi-Fi either at home um, or in their schools or even whenever they are traveling to just not connect to any free Wi-Fi that they 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 that is within their, their range of, of connection. And then make sure your software is um, is up to date. And as my colleague Lewis has mentioned also, to make sure that whatever software your kids are installing on those devices is from a trusted source, because that way, when you do install software from trusted sources, they're able to keep uh, sending security patches and they're able to continue updating, or that those software providers are able to continue updating those software on your child's device, and that's making them less vulnerable to these attacks. And then um, beware, pain before you move to the next slide. So beware if apps are unfamiliar and unusual messages or pop-ups on your device. Again, make sure your kids are looking out for that. And then finally, enable security and antivirus features. And this does entail as well, making sure that on your kids' devices, you have um, antivirus software um, installed. There is a variety of inexpensive um, antivirus software that you can install on your kids' devices just to make sure that they have the protection that they need, they need against these attacks. Uh, so then we can move on to how you build uh, cyber trust. I may not be a parent or guardian myself, but I do think that the best way to build uh, cyber trust is the same way that you as a parent would build trust with your child online or offline, sorry, which is usually by being proactive and by communicating with your child. So the first thing in ensuring that your child is, is safe online is to just communicate with them, stay involved with your children, check in with your kids, and please make sure that you're checking in um, often and particularly checking in on whatever it is they are accessing on those devices and what sites it is they're connecting to on those devices, plus what it is that they've installed on those devices. And then educate your kids on the skills needed to stay um, safe online. Uh, one of them would be, for example, the webinar we're going to have on Saturday that is targeted to kids for us to educate them on how on what skills they need to have to stay safe online. You can have them read material like this when it's shared with you for them to go through it and see how to stay safe. And then also um, the curiosity of kids, encourage that, encourage them to ask questions about things that they see that are a bit unusual, say unusual emails, unusual pop-ups. So when you encourage the curiosity of kids with regard of what they see online, then you'll be able to answer whatever questions they have. And as you encourage that curiosity, then the kids stay open with you. And whenever anything suspicious is happening on their accounts or on their devices, on social media, whenever they are gaming or with their friends, then they'll feel that they trust you enough to come and have that conversation uh, with them. And then finally, practicing what you preach by just being a good example how you use your social media, you're not bullying anyone online. So then your kid will know bullying is wrong. Um, how you, you whatever passwords you're setting, as you set your passwords, talk to them, maybe even try having it as, 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 as a family activity, I'd say, when after a few months you're updating your passwords, you can do it together. And as you set that example, then they'll be able to follow through your steps and make sure that they're protected online. So before we go to the Q&A session, I'd like uh, to leave you with a few tips on how you can keep your kids safe online. The first one is to set very clear ground rules. rules sorry. This entails establishing um, clear guidelines for screen time, um, what they can and can't do online, which websites and applications are okay, blocking even certain sites, blocking them from installing certain applications or having third party applications installed on their devices where you as the guardian, as the parent, you need to put in a password before they can 
install certain applications. And then the second thing is to monitor their activity. As I've mentioned, just being proactive and making sure you are aware of what your children are doing um, on whatever accounts they have and with their devices. And then uh, don't give out personal information. Encourage your children to not give out personal information to anyone, be it their friends, be it their um, playmates or wherever they meet in whatever social interactions, just drilling it into them and, and reminding them not to give out personal information. And then again, uploading your antivirus tools, make sure those are installed and um, and upgraded over time as well. And then in encouraging your kids as they would be in the physical or offline world to be careful with strangers online as well remind them to be careful with strangers and strangers here would be people sending them friend requests there could be strange emails or other emails that they did not anticipate strangers here are organizations that might try to contact them that they have no affiliation with so continuously reminding your children to be careful with strangers online as they would be um offline and then uh reminding them as well as they use social media to post before posting just to think about what it is they want to, to do right online as they would what they would want to say to someone if they're with them face to face and then finally being a friend and not a bully of course online with the social media but also with your kids just talking them through this process uh with clarity but also with kindness just so that they're able to trust you and are able to come with to you in case there are any challenges with this so that's it from me uh and thank you very much for your time i'll hand it over back to Payne to take us through the q a thank you so much chelsea Thank you, Lewis. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Gilbert, for that very insightful session. Um, we do have a couple of questions. And as Chelsea has mentioned, this isn't the only session we have. We'll be holding another webinar on Saturday, beginning 9 a.m. This session is going to be aimed at giving the same tips uh, with more detail to children on how they can be able to uh, keep themselves safe. So please make a point of signing up. We'll be sharing the link within the chat box if it hasn't been shared already. Uh, so that's how you can make sure that you have a follow-up to this session, uh, even as we have a tailor-made set of content and different tips for children. So please make sure you attend that and share this wide um, and without and with other people who you know are interested. So one of the questions we have before Abby gives us her experience with some of these tools is uh, please share some of the safe applications a parent can use to control or limit the time being spent online. Let me type the answer. So one of them is Kaspersky Safe Kids. And this is an interesting question because Abby is going to give us our own experience on the same. I have heard that there is software that children, that parents can install uh, in their phone and their child's phone to monitor the child. Question is, do they work or can the software be manipulated? So the software that does work and we will get into it uh, during the, do I call it a testimonial by Abby? But one of the things that I should mention to the parents on the call is Aside from monitoring, it's not so much about being able to see what your children are doing. It's about knowing what the risks are and making sure you've equipped them with the necessary know-how so that they can protect themselves. And in the event that they are in danger or they're experiencing some sort of problems on the internet, they can be able to let you know. Part of the risk of uh, prioritizing monitoring alone is that you may create a sense of distrust between you and your child. And this might make them be less open to sharing uh, their experiences on the internet. So this is a very careful balance and it's important to mention that uh, to the parents on the call. So someone is asking, kids sometimes use hidden apps. How can you track those? Uh, the other is how can one protect themselves if you need to log into public Wi-Fi? So we recommend that you simply avoid logging into free Wi-Fi. Uh, if possible, please rely on a cellular network. 
As far as hiding apps is concerned, we're going to touch on that with Abby's experience as one of the tools that you can use to make sure that uh, you are keeping the proper safeguards. So another question is, um, let me see. Actually, the only question I'm seeing is if the recording is going to be shared. And one suggestion to have a sign language interpreter because this is very crucial. So that's very good feedback. Thank you so much. Uh, since I can't see any new questions, uh, perhaps Abby, I can welcome you to share your experience with one of the tools that the parents are very curious about. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Pim, uh, and my colleagues who have come before me. So I'm a parent uh, and I also work in KPMG. Uh, and I thought maybe this would help the parents on the call to appreciate uh, this session, as well as some of the steps they could take to secure their children uh, when they are online. So in my part, uh, as you know, with COVID, our children started studying through, you know, I mean, studying went online. That's how they were doing their exams. Uh, you know, they would submit their homework and all that kind of stuff. And so just to make sure that her laptop is not corrupt because of viruses, I decided to install Kaspersky, a very standard one, which comes, which is about less than 3000 shillings or just there based on the, you know, how the taxes have moved up uh, recently. And it allows you to secure a number of gadgets. I think you can secure about three. I don't know how many, but at least you can secure about three. And so what Kaspersky does, that particular standard is that it comes with uh, a safe for kids function or capability, which allows you to select from a broad category, uh, you know, of sites, uh, which ones you want your child to go to. And so those ones you you, you tick green, uh, which one they shouldn't go, those ones are forbidden and so they are red, as well as in the middle ones, which you're, you know, you are here and there 50-50, but assessing as you go along. So Kaspersky gives you a weekly report. It tells you where your child went, where the child was allowed to go and where the child was not allowed to go. If your child tried to play tricks, like for example, the parent who is asking about how can I know which hidden apps my child is going to, Kaspersky will actually tell you that your child tried to go to this place and you stopped them, or they tried to initiate a VPN or go to the website incognito, but we stopped them. And it will also give you a report on uh, a graph showing the percentage usage. So you'll be able to see how much time your child spent on applications like Word, Excel, PowerPoint. It will also show you how much time they spent on the internet and even social media. A higher version of Kaspersky allows you to, uh, to actually restrict the time your child is on the internet. So you can decide you have three hours of internet in a day. And if they exhaust that, then they would have to send you a message through the, you know, through the software to allow them to do that. The other thing is games. You can decide all games are, you know, they are blocked. Uh, like personally, I did that. And if my child needed to play uh, a game, and even up to now, now she's 17, so she's she's a little bit big, um, I, I should have to ask for permission. And this is really important because some of these things on the internet take so much time. If your child is playing a game like, solitaire, uh, which I was addicted to in my early 20s. You close your eyes and you see solitaire, you know, those things moving up and down the cards. So you can imagine if your child is playing that and is also trying to concentrate uh, in their studies. So personally, that is what I would give as my own experience. Uh, I usually tell my daughter that if Kaspersky was a human being, I would be taking him or her for KFC every weekend because to me, Kaspersky is like, my FBI online, and I don't have to worry about my child being online because I'll get a report of what she was doing. Uh, back to you, Pim. Thank you so much, Abby. I think that answers uh, the two questions we had in the Q&A box, uh, as well as the concerns that parents have about how to know what exactly their children are doing. So this is just another reminder 
please make a point of registering for our other free webinar on Saturday aimed at equipping children with the same know-how and the same skills that we've been discussing today. I think this is very uh, commendable for everyone who's made time to be here with us today. So ours is to thank you for taking part today and to hope that we see you again on Saturday, even as we make these steps in trying to keep our children safe online. Thank you so much for making time today. I haven't seen any new questions, uh, but please see the link within the chat box to access the registration link for Saturday's session. It begins at 9 a.m. Please sign up and share it wide. Thank you so much for being with us today. Bye for now.